are you saying that a woman should have her own generational legacy stuff down the road and don't really worry about the man right now? Is that what you're saying? I, that is exactly what I'm saying. In Genesis 1, I know, I know, I know. Oh, look at your face. Yeah, Sarah. look at your face. This is woman evolved Sarah. takeover at this table. Okay, but let me finish. In Genesis 1, God doesn't say to the man, be fruitful and multiply. He says to them, God blesses them. He says, be fruitful and multiply to them. He says to have dominion to them. Yo, what's going on, fam? It's your boy, Anthony O'Neill. Welcome back to the table. Well, you guys already know, we're going to keep it real, relevant, and relatable. This is what we do every Monday morning at 8 a.m. Central Standard Time right here on YouTube and on our podcast world. You guys are uh, becoming my second favorite uh, tribe to be with because you all are new. Uh, but today, I'm super excited because um, I have a, a dear friend of mine. I call her a sister. Y'all have met her phenomenal husband who has become a mentor to myself. Uh, but this, this young lady knew me when I was not even a rookie. I don't know what's before a rookie, uh, but she knew me when I was trying to make a name and she was one of the first people I ever booked in to come in to speak to my young people. And now she has become... I would definitely say the voice uh, in this millennial age, and so I'm so excited. Uh, Y'all know her as Sarah Jace Roberts. Uh, she is the the brains behind Woman Evolve, and I mean, I have watched this queen right here evolve into an amazing woman. So can y'all help me welcome to the table for the first time, Sarah Jace Roberts. What up, Sarah? Hey, family. How are you? Man, I am so, so well, man. I was like, Sarah, Sarah got a new book coming out? I said, yeah, yeah, yeah. I got to get her on the show. Her husband killed my show. I said, now here we go, Sarah. Let's do it. <laughs> I mean, uh, goodness gracious, Sarah, you... <laughs> I'm just so happy for you, man. I'm so I happy. I know it's been a long journey. I I remember that trip very well because it was one of my first times speaking. Mm. And um, it really was the beginning of something incredible. Seems like for the both of us. Absolutely. Absolutely. Sarah was a part of something. She witnessed something. And I'll keep it there. Um, but it was yes. a great transition for myself. And she spoke life into me. And so um, I appreciate Sarah. And I appreciate your husband and your whole family, man. Y'all just amazing. I love what y'all are doing. So... Mm -hmm. um, but this ain't about me. This is about you and this phenomenal book that you have coming out. And I've had a chance to, uh, I haven't read all, read all of it, so I ain't gonna lie to you, but I, I've read about half of your book already. And it's not really, okay. it ain't for me, but you know, you're talking about the women. I'm like, the ladies. I mean, can we get something like Men Evolve, Eventually Downing Road, <laughs> or something, Sarah? <laughs> I'm going to tell my husband, man evolve, man evolve. We need it. <laughs> listen, listen, we're going to do it. We're going to do it. We're going to do it. But let's dive in. I wrote my questions down. Let me get my questions closer to me because I want to make sure I, I ask the right questions. Uh, so y'all watching this channel won't be upset with me. Like, Anthony's for the ladies. So I got you. So Sarah, in this book, Evolve, you believe that it's time for women to evolve for the better and change their lives. Um, what does it mean to evolve, especially as a woman? Evolving is an inside job first. It is identifying the barriers that place limitations on who we can be in mm. God, on who we can be in the world, and who we can be in business, relationally, wherever. I feel like a lot of times we are able to evolve and progress in one area of our life, but then we have another area where we feel stagnant. Mm. And I wanted to write a book that addressed the fullness of what it means to be a woman, but not the completion of what it means to be a woman, the journey of womanhood, how beautiful it is when we begin to live without limits. And so Woman Evolve is all about revolutionizing ourselves over and over and over again. I love it. I, I, I love it. I love it. So in the book, um, not all of my listeners are faith-based driven, right? So I have okay. some Muslims, some non-Christians, but the majority of us are Christians. Let's just be real. I mean, one time for Jesus Christ. Um, but you talk about Eve, the first woman in the book. Tell us why did she inspire you so much inside of this book? Okay, so I love that we are talking to all people because everyone can relate to Eve, whether you are a person of Christian faith or of Islam faith, wherever you are, we know Eve, we know her story, and we know for the most part that her story ends when she eats from the forbidden fruit. That's when we stop telling her story. Mm. She messed it up for us all. If you're like me, you grew up in church saying like, yo, when I get to heaven, I'm gonna let Eve have it because <laughs> she had one job. She failed at that one job, and I am going to let her 
listen, okay, let me stay focused. But <laughs> stay focused. I had to forgive Eve. I Here I am empowering women to look beyond their mistakes, to look beyond their faults, and yet I have this thing in my heart about this woman I've never even met, just heard about in the Bible. Mm. I went back, I look at her story, and I realized that people allow her story to end when she eats from the fruit, but that's not where her story ends. Mm. It evolves after that. She evolves after that. There's restoration, there's breakthrough, there's redemption, and yet we don't tell that part of the story. And then I wondered how many of us can relate to Eve. We knew better, but didn't do better. And we allowed our story to stop at that point. And then most importantly, what would redemption and breakthrough look like for us if we embarked on the same journey that Eve did? So that's what the book is about. It takes you through all of the steps to get there. Man, you know what? It's funny ladies say that. I want to have a conversation with Adam. You know, <laughs> let, let's talk, bro, for real, you know, because, uh, I mean, I, I, yeah, let's stay on the course. We were talking about Woman Evolve because, yeah. Adam, I'm coming to talk to you when I get to heaven. I'm going to talk <laughs> to Jesus, then I'm going to talk to you, bro. Um, yo, so you said something in a book, Sarah, and I really want you to break this down because I it, this shook me personally, even as a man. You have a statement you said, and I love it. If we can get to the root, we can change the fruit. And I, and I was like, yo, so if we can't get to the root, then we'll never get to the fruit. So break that down for us. What do you mean by that, Sarah? So I share a lot about my story. Okay, I was a teen mom. I got pregnant at 13. I had my son at 14 years old. And for a very long time, I penalized myself for that fruit. Mm -hmm. I never took time to consider how did I even end up in a situation where I was that exposed, where I was that vulnerable, where I was that desperate. That is the root. The pregnancy was just the fruit. Mm -hmm. And because I never addressed the root, I spent 10 years repeating different levels of mm -hmm. toxic cycles because I never Ever address the root. Going to the root, which we just work through in the book, we get down to what is the root of my dysfunction? What is the root of my fear? What is the root of my insecurity? For me, that root was the need to be accepted, the need to figure out where I fit in. And that allowed me to end up in totally different circles throughout my life, just trying to answer that question. And when I acknowledged that that is what it was, I was able to create barriers and defenses for myself. A lot of times we talk about boundaries for other people, but the truth is, Sometimes we need boundaries for ourselves, which I know you can relate to when you talk about financial literacy and stability in general. It's about creating boundaries for ourselves. And so those emotional, spiritual boundaries change our fruit. Yeah, yeah. No, that's that's so uh and Sarah, that's one thing I love about you. You're you're always you're probably one of the realest um people I know. I mean just to hear your story, to see where you come from, I'm curious because I think we all, let's just be real, we all have some stuff in the past that we need to evolve from, that we need to learn from, that we need to get over. Heck, um, you said you're a teenage mother. By the grace of God, I'm, I'm not a teenage father. You know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm practicing what I'm practicing now, but I have a past as well. How yeah. do we learn uh, from our past? How do we learn how to evolve from the mistakes that we've done so we can grow and experience everything God has for us? You know, the key to what you said there is how do we evolve? No. What I spent a long time trying to do was disconnect from what I did. Wow. I wanted to bury it. I never wanted to see it again. I wanted to disconnect. And I actually think God's graciousness allowed for it to be a child, right? Because mm -hmm. if you were experiencing other issues, other circumstances, you could probably draw a line in the sand and never think about it again. But I was there with the evidence right. of this fruit every single day. And because of that evidence, I learned that we don't disconnect. We don't don't divide ourselves. What we do instead is we embrace ourselves. We embrace every part of our life and we find the wisdom connected to those wounds. Mm -hmm. We find empathy and self-forgiveness for ourselves. We receive the truth, a higher truth for ourselves. And then we evolve armed with that truth, not with shame, not with guilt, not with disappointment, but armed with the truth of who I am today could not even be possible if it wasn't for what I went through then. Did you know that there are nearly 45 million American people people that total up to have $1.6 trillion in student loan debt. Did you know that one of the main reasons uh, preventing people from building true and lasting wealth are student loans? The average person will graduate with $35,000 in student loans, but a fifth of these people will graduate with a mortgage payment, but don't even have real estate. That's right. They graduate with $100,000, $300,000 in student loan debt. And when I wrote the book, Debt Free Degree, and I was out there on book tour, and people were asking me, hey, I'm getting this book for my child, but what do you have for me? I have student loans, and I need to pay them off 
but I need direction. So I wrote a book called Destroy Your Student Loan Debt, the step-by-step -step plan on how to pay off your student loans. I want you to get the book. It's only 55 pages long, and I literally walk you through step-by-step. -step. How do you refi your student loans? How do you pay them off quicker? How do you negotiate some payments lower? I walk you through every single thing. It's a quick read. And if you buy it, it's only 10 bucks. 10 bucks can save you 10 years. Get the book right now. Go to anthonyoneal.com, anthonyoneal.com, and change the next 10 years of your life. It's your boy, Anthony O'Neill, and I approve this message. Ladies and gentlemen, if you're just now tuning into the show, you are tuned in uh, to the table with your boy, Anthony O'Neill, and we're having a real and relevant and relatable conversation with the one and only Sarah Jakes uh, Roberts. She is the author of Women Evolved, and she has several other books. But what I love about this book is you're going to learn how to break up with your fears and revolutionize your life. I'm going to make sure to drop the link to her book here uh, in the show notes, so make sure you check that out. But Sarah, I want to I want to kind of transition a little bit into fears because you talk okay. about break up with your fears. How do fears actually hold us back from experiencing all that life has for us? Fears are so sneaky because they pretend to keep us safe. Fears say, don't do that because you could get hurt. Don't do that because you could fail. Don't do that because it may not work out. And it sounds so logical and sensical that we begin to trust our fears. And because they pretend to keep us safe, it's difficult for us to break up with them. But there is this longing down on the inside of us that says, I wonder who I could be if. Mm. I wonder what would happen if. And that longing does not go away. And so how do I align that longing with my being and my presence? presence. And so one, I think it starts, we start to direct our faith in the direction of our fears. Well, if it does fail, God will give me wisdom and faith so that I never have to experience that again. If it does fail, then at least I won't live haunted and taunted by the idea of what if faith and fears must walk together, right? Come we on. don't ever totally avoid our fears, but your faith ought to be talking back to your fears. Your fears cannot have the microphone alone. Listen, this is going to be a duet if it is nothing else. My fear may be singing, but my faith is going to be rapping on this bridge, okay? Because <laughs> we going to be in this thing together. That's right, Sarah. Oh, the preacher Sarah about to come out, y'all. Y'all better watch out. She's trying to hold herself in, y'all, but she coming I'm not, in. I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it. <laughs> oh, Lord. So, hey, Sarah, let's be real. You have some ladies right now um, who are fearful to opening up. You know, they've been cheated on by men. They've been lied to by men. Uh, they have some scars in the past. Uh, they're, they're fearful of really just embracing something new. So when they feel that fear, what should they do to get beyond that? Whenever you have been in a toxic relationship, especially if you've been in a series mm. of toxic relationships, it is perfectly normal to come to a place where you're like, you know what, I'm not going to do it again at all. But that's not how we're supposed to live. We're supposed to live free and we're supposed to live open. And so instead of treating those relationships and situations as if I'm never going to do it again, we have to ask ourselves, how can I learn from this? Mm -hmm. Who was I when I engaged in this relationship? A lot of times we experience experience red flags or pink flags or orange flags, but we ignore them because we see so much potential in a person. Who was I? What was I in need of? Dissecting who we were in that moment is so important so that we never have to repeat that cycle again. The other thing I would say is we don't have to be desperate. We can be so fulfilled in our identity and who we are. I was a single mother. I'm married now. I have an incredible husband. He's absolutely changed my life. But before I met him, I was so in love with myself that like giving up my life to be with him was literally a sacrifice because I was so in love with who I am, but I knew that it was a God sacrifice and that God sacrifice always adds increase to you afterwards. But we got to get to a place where we're like, yo, I'm digging me so much that I don't know if I can even rock with you like that. Is it wrong for me to think that, Sarah, me being single? Like, I'm so bad, I don't know if I can rock with you like that. Is it wrong? Is it selfish? Because <laughs> I'm trying to tell you, but I'm like, I, I feel you. I, I, Sarah, man, listen. Oh, man, Sarah. Now, here's something that you, you talk about this in your book, and I'm like, okay, 
Like, ser- I was joking in the beginning. I think, men, if you do read this, it's good to read it to have an understanding how Sarah's talking to the ladies. But there's a lot in this book that we can get as men. And mm. you said something in there, one of the biggest fears holding women back. But I want to say one of the biggest fears holding people back is fearing what other people think about yeah. you. And that's not just for ladies. You know, I, I'm going to keep it a stat. Like, I, I, that's my biggest fear to this day. Like, yeah. I, I got this platform, you have a platform. I'm like, okay, how do I, if I say this, what will they say? If I say this, am I on the news? If I do this wrong, man, everyone's talking about me. Or, like, I'm even fearful, Sarah, to be real, from a, a single uh, person's perspective. I know people are attracted to the brand, but will they like the person, Anthony? Yeah. And it's like, how do we get through worrying about what others will say about us? How do we get through that fear? Man, you've said so much here. As a person with a platform, I have found that the comments that sting the worst, the ones that hurt me the most, are the ones that echo an insecurity that already existed down on the inside of me. If someone comments on my page and tells me that two plus two equals five, I don't care about that because I know it's not true. But when they start to tell me two plus two equals four or that you're just doing this for that reason or you're this or you're that, it stings because there is a part of my fear and insecurity that thinks that they could be right. Mm -hmm. And then I have to do the work to work through that. So when it comes down to uh, what people think, I think we have to dissect why it stings so much. We have to do some self-introspection and investigation why did that hurt so much when they said that? Yeah. If it's not true, is there a part of me that believes it? And as it relates to more intimate, personal relationships, we have to come to a place where we are willing to give people in those intimate relationships the authentic version of who we are. My husband tells this story about when he came to Dallas to visit me on our second date, mm-hmm. uh, that I took my makeup off when he was coming by my house because I don't go to bed with makeup on. So he was coming by to say goodnight and say that he was leaving town. And I took my makeup off and I answered the door without my makeup on. And he was like, you were always the realest to me because of that. But I'm like, listen, I don't have time for you to fall in love with a perversion of me that I will not be 24-7. Now, I'm going to put on these brows. I'm going to put on these eyelashes. And we're going to do what needs to be done. But (laughs) 24-7, I'm basically going to be looking like this. So I was like, this is who I am up front. Sarah, you don't, boy, Sarah, hey, listen, all the brothers watching this show right now are going to be like, hey, Sarah Jake said on her second date, she took off the mar- uh, the makeup. Can you take off I your makeup, did. please? <laughs> oh, Lord, oh, Lord, don't get me in trouble with the sisters. <laughs> but, I mean, you did that, and you didn't really care about what, you wanted him to see the authentic self. And it's like, and like yeah. I'm pretty sure you cared about what he thought about, but it's like, hey, I want to give you the real up front. Whether you like it or not, let's have that combo relationships are invasive. And that's why a lot of us end up having um, emotional withdrawal. We're in relationships, but we're not totally in them because they are so invasive. People want to know why you think the way you do, why you show up the way that you do. And you have to invite someone into this deep, sometimes childhood trauma version of who you are. So we don't even have time to pretend on the surface level because if this continues moving in the direction that it could move, you're going to be all in my stuff, Mm -hmm. all in my issues and struggles. And so as much as we can keep it real, I think that that's better. Sarah Jakes. Sarah Jakes Roberts. Lord have mercy. This this is why y'all need to be following uh, this woman right here uh, because I I follow her her podcast. I listen to her show and I'm going to drop all her information in the show notes. So don't don't worry about that right now. Uh, But this this is just, I think this is like out of 10, this is like 5.5 of Sarah. Now on her show, oh, Sarah, she going to keep it. She she going to, listen, Get with <laughs> I'm now that you watch the show, it makes me want to start acting right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I get it. When you get on somebody else's platform, I rock with you. I get it. But I'm telling y'all right now, go to her show. And if you like what you like here, you're going to be in love because she is the definition of real, relevant, and relatable relatable as a woman of God. You're not gonna get no 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 preacher who sounds like a preacher. You're gonna get a preacher. Um, you're gonna get a woman, uh, but she's just so real. When you guys think about your finances, aka your money, do you get stressed? Do you get anxious? Do you feel like, hey, where do I start? How do I begin? What do I do? 
but check it. I totally get it because I remember being 18 years old, being a young man, uh, living paycheck to paycheck, homeless, sleeping in the back of my car. I totally, totally get it. But I got something I want to share with you that's going to help change your financial future. And this is called Ramsey Plus. Ramsey Plus is going to give you this step-by-step -step plan, the step-by-step -step guide on how to change your financial future. Inside of Ramsey Plus, you're going to learn how to get an emergency fund, uh, how to get out of debt, how to start building wealth, how to start investing. We're going to teach you everything you need to know on how to change your financial future. So for right now, if you text the word AO plus, AO plus to 33789, I'm going to give you a free 30 day trial. Now check this out, you guys. Let me be real with you, all right? Can you think about what can happen if you commit to 30 days, what those 30 days can do for the next 30 years of your family's life and your life? Listen, I can't say nothing else. Text the word AO plus to 33789 so you can change your family's future. This is your boy, Anthony O'Neill, and I approve this message. So my team wanted me to ask you some questions as well. So these questions okay. are coming from my team. Now, I thought this is pretty good. You said the hope of tomorrow is buried in the seeds of today, but seeds don't sprout without work. And work cannot be deemed effective unless there is a goal attached to it. So I got to ask this question. I, I totally believe in goals. Uh, but in, from your opinion, why are setting goals important for success? Oh, goodness. Okay, so before we even get into the goals conversation in the book, we've done a lot of inner work. And now we're kind of thinking in the highest version of ourselves in this book. Goals are important, but not just like short-term goals, okay. generational goals. Uh -oh. We talk about our ability to be here in the earth, not just for ourselves, but for the generations connected to us. And so I challenge people to like, if your goal, if your short-term goal is to lose 10 pounds, then a generational goal is to create a healthy lifestyle so that someone isn't in this position again. How do I connect my short-term goals with my generational goals? And we and I have tools and practices that help you to connect those dots, but short-term, long-term, generational. Because at the end of the day, we're here to push the ball forward, yeah, okay? I'm yeah. not just here to make my name great. I'm trying to push something forward so that my family doesn't end up in this same cycle over and over again. We talk about God breaking generational curses. How does God break generational curses? He uses people who have decided that it has to end with me. And if it's going to end with you, then your goal has to be bigger than just you. And so zooming out of the picture is one of the keys and reasons why I believe that goals are so, so important for our purpose in life. You know what, Sarah, you said something that is so interesting. Okay. I, I heard you say something about, okay, think about future generations. And it's like, I know the guys listening right now, and they're thinking like, well, that's, that sounds like legacy. Well, isn't that the man's responsibility to worry about legacy? And the wife comes on and they work together. But I hear you saying like, hey, no, start thinking future generations, your last name. And then the man is over here saying, I'm thinking about this, I'm thinking about that. They could still do that together. Um, now, are you saying that a woman should have her own generational legacy stuff down the road and don't really worry about the man right now? Is that what you're saying? I, that is exactly what I'm saying. In Genesis 1, I know, I know, I know. Uh, look at your face. Yeah, Sarah. look at your face. This is woman evolved takeover at the table. Look at your whole face. Okay, but let me finish. In Genesis 1, God doesn't say be, to the man, be fruitful and multiply. He says to them, God blesses them. He says, be fruitful and multiply to them. He says to have dominion to them. To them, them, them. And so, yes, a woman should have her own generational goals and God will bring someone in her life if that is a part of his plan for her life and that is a part of her plan for her life that will accompany those generational goals. My husband had goals when he met me. Yeah. I had goals when I met my husband and now we work in tandem to make those goals a reality. But to be fruitful and multiply is not just to have filling the earth with babies. It's filling the earth with the essence of you. Your business is being fruitful and multiplying. Your organization is fruitful and multiply. The nonprofit, the ministry, the books, the social media platform is fruitful and multiply. And we don't have to wait for a man to come along to multiply. It's beautiful when they come, when it's a God-designed man. But if it is not, that does not mean that you cannot multiply where you are with what you have now. <laughs> Ha <laughs> ha! 
Yo, Seth, I, I'll give you that one. I, I'll give it to you. I'll give it to you. You know, I, I really will. I think I come from a more traditional background, and I'm learning this. I mean, I, I'm, I'm, I'm learning. I'm not saying that I'm this selfish guy and a woman shouldn't come with nothing. But, Sarah, let me ask you this. You're a oh, yeah, strong— cause this is, Yeah, because I'm about to get you together. Let's go. What you saying? <laughs> Sarah, <laughs> I'm about to get you ready for your wife. Hey, Let's listen, go. help me out. I mean, you know what I'm saying? Because, I mean, I, I, I want a partner. But now, Sarah, let, let's let's talk about you and Torre, because Torre was booming before he met you. Absolutely. He, he was killing, already had a name. I knew Torre before y'all two got married. Now, of course, I knew you beforehand, but I'm like, I knew Torre. I was like, yo, that's, that's solid. And then, Sarah, yo, you were booming too. Let's not even front. So it's like, how did you come with everything Sarah had and still made Torre feel like the man? Because I think that's the problem that men have is some ladies come in there saying, my name is Sarah Jakes, and you got to adapt to me. I'm not adapting to you. But that didn't happen with you two. And that's the problem that I have, is when a woman comes to me and says, I've built this, <laughs> I have this goal, and you have to accomplish and deal with this, I don't feel a part. Yeah. So, that like, is, what do we do? That's fair. But I will tell you, one of the things my husband told me very early on in our courtship mm -hmm. is that he felt like his purpose was to create an environment for me to flourish. Wow. He went into our relationship with the idea of, I want you to flourish because we are together. Okay. And that means that I also had to wrap my mind around the idea of receiving someone who felt like their role in my life was to make me bigger and better and the best version wow. of myself. In exchange for that heart posture, I think one of the things we both have had to do is not be so impressed with our resume that we miss out on the opportunity for intimacy. Your resume does not matter in a relationship. Talk. Not your resume, not her resume. Mm. Because if you were that big and bad by yourself, then why do you need partnership? Mm. But at the end of the day, what we are talking about is partnership. I have a mutual respect for what you do in the earth. So you don't have to prove to me every time we're in a in a conversation conversation or communication who you are. I already know who you are. I want to help you become more of who you are. And when both people carry that heart when they come into a relationship, then I think we see a lot less proving who we are and a lot more settling into who we are not, but who we could become if we join forces together. Tell Torre, I owe him a tithe. Uh -huh. <laughs> For real. Tell Torre, I'm, I'm going to send him a love offering. I love how you said he said it, it is his responsibility to create a place where you can flourish. And he does that. He yeah. does that um, exceptionally. I've been yes. doing so much press. He's been getting up at 2, 4 o'clock in the morning. He's been driving me to wow. the interview. He's been coaching me through the interviews. He wants me to be the best in whatever it is I do. And, uh, you know, I do the same thing for him. I make him do breakfast you? every morning. I cook him dinner. Like, we are in this together, and no one is bigger than the other. I need him. I need him in my life, and I believe that he needs me, too. Ha, ba, ba, ba. <laughs> huh? Huh? See, see, that's the realness. See, I, I don't. I wouldn't have a problem with. I don't. I want to serve my wife. I mean, this, is, this ain't about me, but I want to serve. It is about you because we need a deliverance. Because I be seeing your Instagram, <laughs> and I just want to see what is happening in your world out here. And I know so many women oh. who would be so honored to be with someone who at least has their finances together. But is your mind together? We trying to figure out what that mind is talking about. Yo, Sarah. I mean, I listen, man. You know me. You, you know me since I was a you know a little a little rookie. And I'm not gonna sit here and say I'm perfect. I'm gonna be. 100. I'm, I got issues, you know, that, that that I know I'm working on, and I believe I'm going to have issues for the rest of my life that I always for will sure. be working on. Uh, but I think for me, it's it's hard dating as a, as a brand uh, because the hardest thing for me is to, to, do I feel comfortable giving them the person, trusting them with my heart, trusting them with, with, with all of that. And I want someone that I that I can love, that I can create a safe place for them to flourish. I just do not want to feel like I, I am in competition with my wife. I want to feel like we are a team and we're building something that our kids, kids, kids will talk about. Do you see yourself outside of your brand? Like, or do you feel in touch with who you are outside of your brand? How is Sarah going to interview me on my show? <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, do I see? Is this? Yo, listen, <laughs> listen. Um, just for y'all just now tuning in, uh, this is the Woman Evolve podcast, just on the table. Uh, do I see myself outside of my brand? Yeah, absolutely, man. Listen, when I go home, Sarah, my team will tell you Anthony disconnects. Like I love my brand, I love it. I mean, that's who I am. But sometimes I just want to go home and just cut off everything and just, you know, just escape. You know. And so, you know, I would just say to you uh-oh. that this is good. a lot of times it's the same thing that you actually say about women is like, I think a woman wants to know where does she fit in your world? Mm. Not necessarily your brand, but like, where do I fit in your world? Mm. And if the only thing she sees is your brand and you are afraid that she won't see beyond your brand, it seems like a self-fulfilling um, prophecy because at the end of the day, where do you need me? Where do I fit? So I do think, you know, there could be something to a level of vulnerability being tapped into that would allow for a woman to see how she could be um, a partner in your life. So how do I do that, sir? I, oh, think, I think I'm doing it. I don't you talk do? ab- I don't talk about my brand. I don't talk about my organization when I am dating. I just don't. Are you aware of where a woman could partner in your life to make you better? Nope. I ain't, I ain't going to lie about that, Sarah, because I, I've never yeah. dated a woman that I felt like she wanted to be a part of that. Yeah, but if the woman is not out there mm-hmm. and there is no vision for her, if she were to come in, then she could be standing right in front of your face and you wouldn't really know it. I think there's something to, like, what does partnership look like for me? Mm. What would a partner in this world of mine look like for me? What do we laugh about? What are her goals? What are her core ethics and values? Because how can you determine if she's out there if you don't have anything that's qualifying her? The Woman Evolve podcast can be found on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> YouTube, Yo. or wherever you listen to your podcast. Yo, listen here, Sarah. This has never fine. happened on my show. I just want y'all to know this. Uh, Everything. But is Sarah is my sister, so I trust her because I still think I'm a, a daggone great man. Uh, but th- that is fair, Sarah. I mean, I think that is something that I promise you I would do tonight. I would definitely sit down, uh, write out where can my wife help me become a better man? Like, where where does she fit in my life? Um, where does she fit? You know, my husband did that. He, but the night before we met, now we met, it was just business, our first meeting. Yeah. But the night before we met, he wrote down who he wanted his woman to be okay. and then who he would be to that woman. And we had our business meeting and he wasn't even thinking about that list. It wasn't until almost a month and a half later when we saw each other again that we kind of felt some chemistry. Right. And then he started comparing who I was to the list. list. We need a vision for this. We need a vision. How can we have partnership without vision? You wouldn't get into a business partnership without a vision. Absolutely. Absolutely. You're absolutely right. Absolutely. Okay, I'm ask me a question. Come on, your turn. <laughs> <laughs> ask me. I'm going to give you your podcast. Ask me a question. Yo, yo, yo. I'm ready. Listen, Sarah, you know, I wish we had an hour, man, because, uh, yo, Sarah, this 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 right here fire. But let's let's ask the last question, and we, let's talk a little bit about more of what's inside of your book. I'll give you the opportunity to do that and where people can buy it. Uh, but pe- tell us about your company, because like I would say about 70% of my tribe are ladies. And so I really want them to get connected to your brand. Um, uh, once COVID is over, Sarah travels the world. And I literally mean this. Um, and I want to give Sarah her props. Um, Sarah is the daughter of Bishop T.D. Jakes. But while she loves her dad, I can say this. She has built the platform off of her and her husband, not her father's name. And when she goes into arena, Sarah Jakes is packing out rooms with her message because it's just fire. So, Sarah, tell the people more about the company Woman Evolve. What all does it do? How are you helping ladies? And why should they be rocking with you? 
man, Womany Evolve started. I had this revelation about Eve. This was almost three years ago. And traditional traditional model was like, we should have a conference. Mm -hmm. But then I started thinking about how can I do life with women in every single capacity of their life, mm -hmm. through fashion, through entertainment, through resources and tools, and through entertainment. And so it kind of began this whole movement, this multimedia movement that focused on every aspect of what it means to be a woman. And we're continuing to add branches to the tree, but from the podcast to subscription video on-demand content that covers everything from budgeting to wow. pajama interviews yeah. to mental health, we started really creating opportunities for women to connect fashion and style, hair and makeup. We've got a clothing line. We've got all of these different things that we're doing. We're, we've now got Woman Evolve chapters into prisons. I have wow. so many plans for like transitional homes and things that I want to do to continue to help women evolve. And so what began is what I thought would just be a conference has really taken on this life of its own. And I've tried to be really sensitive to what would work. Our events, I think, are so much fun because, of course, I'm going to preach and we're going to have this moment where we have this radical divine encounter with God. But during pre-show, we're like swag surfing. We're listening <laughs> to music. We're having dance because... I want women to feel safe enough to bring all of yourself into this room. Let's yeah. not act like you did not hear Beyonce's new album. Come Let's on. not act like you did not come here with your eyebrows done and your hair <laughs> laid. Okay, bring all of you into the room, and that's who God wants to touch. And then we'll see what happens from there. And I've just been so blessed that God sits in the room. Lives are changed and transformed. It's incredible. Yeah, yeah. Sarah, my mom came to your um, Women Evolve, and she uh. was like, can you please tell Sarah it blessed me? And she was like, and she is way younger than me, but she spoke so much life into me. And she said the pre-party was yeah. on point. I said, Mom, you was <laughs> She was like, y'all had a pre-party? She said, no, nah, my name. I was just sitting in the, in the church and they were just having a real good time. And I we said, oh, were. I said, oh, 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 oh. Mom, that sounds kind of weird coming from you, but oh, okay, all right. So I, I love it. I love it, Sarah. And, and her fashion is on point. I've um, Everything you've put out for men, I've purchased, uh, uh -huh. which is so dope, too. Like, I'm like, yo, woman evolved putting out some men clothes. Like I got the jacket. It was a tan jacket. Yeah. Fire. I was like, okay, yeah, I, I'm rocking with this. Um, um, yo, so Sarah, how do we, how can they get your book, Women Evolve, and tell them a little bit about what whatever we didn't talk about in today's interview, uh, what else is important in, in this book and why should they get it? The most important part of this book for me is helping women realize that the revolution of you is closer than it appears. It just requires doing some work. And the good thing is because of the book, you don't have to do the work alone. Uh, Woman Evolve is available wherever books are sold. You can get plugged in with the movement and be a part of all of those things I listed. Just follow us on social media. We'll do the rest from there. And I'm on all the socials at Sarah Jakes Roberts on Facebook and Instagram and at S. Jakes Roberts on Twitter. Y'all follow her. I'm gonna put it. I'm gonna put all her information in the show notes um, on YouTube. Do not come for me on YouTube uh, because don't forget this is my <laughs> show. And uh, if you want to come for me, go over to her show and talk to Yay! Sarah about about uh, <laughs> about what she made me say on my own show. That's uh, fine. But listen, only friends who I who I trust their character and integrity. Uh, will I allow to do something like that? Anybody else, don't try it when you come on my show because we will end that and edit that out. Uh, but we're not going to edit this one out because, hey, this is a real, this is a relevant, and this is a relatable conversation. And your boy, Anthony, um, I will always have some things to work on. And, and I'm excited about that because I want to continue evolving myself. And so oh. I love it. So, Sarah, thank you so much, sis. Please tell your husband I said hello. And I may text him and say, hey, man, help me do what you did. Because uh, yeah. clearly when you did that, I believe it sent the special message to Christ because he was like, yo, you're stewarding this season well. And then the next day you met your wife. I'm like, okay, yeah. wait, if I do that today, uh, God, can I get that same favor Torrey has? <laughs> Tomorrow could be special. Who hey, knows? <laughs> listen, 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 listen. I hope so. I'm getting old, man. You know, I gotta get, I gotta get me a wife and some kids, man. Because you know what, so Sarah, I'll say this. I, I gotta go. Um, you know what, my greatest thing for me is, it's not the platform that I have. It's not the money that I have. It's I genuinely want to be the best husband and the best mm. father uh, and the best grandfather, and I want to leave mm. a legacy. Um, to the kids, kids, kids that I will never meet. But because I was a good steward, I was able to leave them with something. And so um, I know I have to evolve 
now to accomplish that. So thank you for challenging me on that stuff too. So love you, sis. Love y'all oh, too. I love you too. Thank you. Thank you for this. Oh, You're no. going to do that and so much more. So much more. Blessings for you on your journey and legacy. Nah, man. Y'all, that's my sister, Sarah Jace Roberts. Go check her out and see y'all next week right here at the table. Uh, 8 a.m. Central Standard Time, Monday morning. So keep it locked. We'll let you know next week. Peace out.